I'm currently in the back of a car ascending a dormant volcano in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, which also happens to be the tallest mountain in the world. Not to be confused with Everest, which is the highest in the world. That's a way bigger achievement than what I'm doing. But this is Mauna Kea, one of the six volcanoes that have formed the island of Hawaii. It's around minus three degrees right now, snow has fallen, and from where I'm stood at the summit to the ocean floor, the total height of this dormant volcano is 33,500 feet. And just a few hours ago, I was immersed in a tropical rainforest. And a few hours before that, I was stood on this baking hot beach that gets very little rain. So how the hell can this island that you can actually drive around in under six hours have such drastically different climates? does have very different climates. On the big island of Hawaii, you can find 10 of the world's 14 climate zones. So think about it this way, the tropics of Singapore, the subtropical deserts of the Middle East, the temperate seasons of the UK, and the polar zones of Northern Sweden, all condense into one landmass in the North Pacific Ocean. I mean, I've been there and I've experienced it and it still blows my mind how you can be surfing on a beach in Kona where it barely rains and then you can travel two hours across the island to Hilo in the tropics where it could rain at any moment. Madness. And this small topic has been itching at me for months now, so I finally decided to do something about it and it's actually a very unique anomaly. So let's explore that, the climate zones of Hawaii. So the islands of Hawaii claim 10 of the world's climate zones. This is the only place on earth with so many concentrated into one small area. And you can visit all of them on Hawaii, the big island, or find a few of them scattered throughout the other islands. So first of all, what is a climate zone? They are the classifications that divide up the different climates on our planet. There are five main groups according to the Köppen climate clarification. That is a mouthful, which is the most widely used climate clarification system, which was first published by the German Russian climatologist with the same name. So the five main climate groups are tropical, dry, temperate, continental, and polar. This map shows the five zones across the world, with the tropics sitting on either side of the equator, where the sun almost hits straight on all year round. Although the zones are very blurred and as a result of global warming, they're all moving, making all regions hotter and dry. So then all of these groups are broken down into subcategories, and these are the key 14. Now looking at the five main groups again, it should now be clear why Uganda has a warm tropical rainforest climate Las Vegas has a hot subtropical desert climate and Denmark has a temperate climate with all four seasons. Now I said that the boundaries were blurred and when you think of Hawaii you're probably thinking of a tropical paradise where you can go surfing and chill out on beautiful beaches, maybe see some incredible wildlife. And they are tropical islands, but the islands experience many different climates because of the varying altitude and surroundings. The Big Island has four of the five climate groups and 10 of the 14 Kupin subcategories, simply because it's bigger and higher than the other islands. Being higher, you get the colder climates like we saw at the top of Mauna Kea, which is classed as the polar zone of Hawaii. Not as cold as the Arctic for sure, but even during the warmest months, it's average Average is 10 degrees Celsius or lower, which puts it into this climate zone. And with Hawaii being the biggest island, they have lots of different interactions with wind, creating different wind regimes that affect the climate. So if we head down from Mauna Kea to the northeast corner of the island, we will reach the greenest part of Hawaii and it is beautiful. It blew me away and for good reason. So with the average temperature being 18 degrees Celsius and high annual rainfall, this categorizes every one of the tropical subcategories with this one standing out in particular. By having no distinct dry season, the zone is found primarily on the windward side of the island, drawing in the rain against the mountainside, creating a rain shadow effect, which produces the third climate zone in Hawaii, the dry hot deserts and semi-deserts, AKA where some of Hawaii's best beaches are located. The dry zone would likely be found throughout all of the island's populated coastal towns and resort areas like Honolulu, Waikiki, and Kona. Despite the lack of rainfall in this region, people manage to live comfortably in these areas due to the cool ocean breeze dropping in on the land and of course on the beaches. And finally on the big island, you will also find temperate conditions, which I totally relate with wet and warm European weather. In fact, look at this clip on our drive towards the base of Mauna Kea. I distinctly remember looking out the window and thinking this looked awfully like the British countryside, not Hawaii, but England. 
So in the temperate zone, the temperature can be anywhere from 10 to 21 degrees Celsius with rainfall all year round, just like England, not particularly the weather you go to Hawaii for, but it actually covers the largest share of the island's acreage. The region stretches like a ribbon between the rainforest on the eastern side, around Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, and then north again through the highlands of the Kona coast. And that is all the climate zones of Hawaii. It's not that hard to get your head around it when you think about it. And the fifth zone, which is continental climate, doesn't exist in Hawaii because it has to have an average of at least one month below freezing and at least one month averaging around 10 degrees Celsius. I also spent time on Oahu, which was unbelievable, and it felt more of a mix between dry deserts and rainforests. And all of the Hawaiian islands are unique. I really want to go back and visit Maui and Kauai. They both look insane in their own way. But these fluctuating climate zones just adds to the unique story of the Hawaiian culture, a place in the world where a connection to the natural world is so apparent. I was originally in Hawaii shooting an episode of Origins on the history of bodyboarding to its Polynesian roots in Hawaii. So if you're interested in the history of surfing and Hawaiian culture, you may want to check it out. I will link it up here. So I appreciate you taking the time to nerd out with me about climate zones in Hawaii. I really appreciate it. If you're new around here, my name is Andy. I make word explainers on this channel every Sunday. And the goal right now is to get this channel to 10K subscribers. And if you want to help with that goal, the best thing you can do is to hit the subscribe button. It would mean the world. There's an ice cream van outside my studio. I'm going to go and get an ice cream. So I'm going to leave it here. Stay safe and I will catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>